Mississippi River. This is Chicago, Detroit, New York. You don't find them out in Iowa. <laughs> unless they're playing basketball or something. <laughs> this is Oakland. Oh, I went backwards, didn't I? These are where Hispanics are. So when I talk about segregation, this is real, even when you look at it in a, in a, in a, um, uh, a continental aspect. You know, what's the dividing line? Here, Texas, right? Eastern Texas is African American, Western Texas, Hispanic, Northern Texas is white. Very interesting mix. In fact, Texas now is the old South Carolina. What South Carolina was for race during slavery, now Texas is. So a lot of issues of race are emerging out of Texas. And so it'd be interesting to watch what happens, especially politically, especially that we have an interesting president that came out of there, or two of them that came out of there. <laughs> the last census, Tiger Woods was very successful in saying what? I'm more than black. So you actually were able to say you were more than black in the last census. So this is where people of mixed ancestry or mixed race, who reported that you know, in terms across the US. And you find that Oklahoma, a very large portion of folks in Oklahoma said they, were, they weren't white, just white, or just black, or just uh, Native American. Everybody wanted to be whatever they were and Native American. You see what I'm saying? Because <laughs> there was a lot of things emerging in Native American uh, politics. So it was cool. I mean, the Seminoles bought what? Hard Rock Cafe. So they went from ashy to classy overnight. <laughs> So this is interesting because we talk about defining ourselves or having you know, somebody define us. Who's black? The answer depends on where you are. In the US, because of the legislated, it was socially legislated by the one drop rule, the rule of hypo descent, you are black. Because as I mentioned, you have one ancestor who's black. But now everybody wants to see what else is in my genome? What else is there? This is exciting because not only could we uh, say something about family history, but we can also say something about deep history, okay? And so there are two types of analysis, the biogeographic -ge analysis or admixture analysis, if you guys saw that PBS special that I was a part of, where we t traced Oprah's roots and um, uh, 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 Brother Burroughs was also involved in that. And then the lineage-based ancestry, which is more specific, and that's what some of the stuff that I'm involved in, where we trace maternal and paternal lines, specific segments of DNA. One's called mitochondrial DNA, which is paternally inherited. The other one's uh, uh, Y chromosome DNA, which is paternally inherited, father to son. And they're very unique. They have unique features and um, are very informative for lineage ancestry. I'm not going to get much into this. I know I don't have that much time. But <laughs> when we look at these markers, what? One minute. Are you serious? Okay. All right. <laughs> This is a paper I wrote where we talked about the use of genetics to say something about personalized um, uh, genetic history. And um, this is just a map showing the different maternal lineages that we know that are uh, continent specific. Like for instance, these L lineages are common in Africa, these in Europe, these in the Middle East and Asia. And then the founding of the Native American, the four major Native American lineages out of the Asian um, uh, uh, ancestry uh, gene pool. So this is very fascinating stuff. And there are, studies are ongoing. People are still finding new lineages because we're sampling more and more throughout the world. So the science in terms of African ancestry, informative DNA markers, as I mentioned, Y chromosome and mitochondrial DNA, we have a very large database that, ex that allows us to explore these lineages. And real quickly, I have 30 seconds, right? <laughs> Let's say, for instance, we look at a mother's DNA sequence and, a fa and, a, and a, her daughter's DNA sequence. It should be the same, right? Because, you know, it's her daughter, right? So what we do is we look for those polymorphisms. This is in mitochondrial DNA. And we look for polymorphisms. These are those things that are different. And uh, the son should also, because he inherits his mitochondrial DNA from his mother, he just can't transparent, I mean, transmit it on, but the, the daughter can. And if you look at the neighbor's mitochondrial DNA sequence, it should be different, right? <laughs> Right? So here we see it's different. Most of the time it's different. So what we do is we look at this profile in that family and compare it to profiles in a database from different populations. What we do with African ancestry is actually look at a large database, a large collection of these lineages from Africa. 
And so, for instance, here we find a match. This is just a, a general um, uh, way of displaying it. We find a match with the Fulani from Nigeria. And you see that those polymorphisms match, and they're different from, let's say, the Akan from Ghana or the Mandinka from Senegal. It's pretty simple, CSI stuff. It's very similar to CSI, okay? And then you say, well, the Fulani have a very large dis geographic distribution. Yeah, but many of those lineages are restricted geographically to certain areas. And so the Fulani in Nigeria are a bit different from the Fulani in Niger, okay? This is the Y chromosome. This is magnified uh, 10,000 times, the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. So this little glob of DNA, as I mentioned earlier, is the Y chromosome. And there's some, as I mentioned, important genes. But we also know that since it's clonally inherited, from father to son, father to son, it doesn't change. And so we can use that to trace the history of male lineages. And so this is just a, a, a tree showing the different lineages throughout the world. And um, uh, real quickly, this is just my match of the mitochondrial DNA, my maternal line, in uh, uh, matching in Nigeria, northern Nigeria. Uh, this, was, this is from the, um, uh, the PBS special, African American Lives. We actually tested Mae Jameson, who was the first black woman astronaut. And uh, she had a very, very common lineage. It was very old, very, very old mitochondrial DNA lineage L1A, which is common throughout all of West Africa. So we weren't able to localize to a particular region. And that happens sometimes. It's like having a last name like Smith. Which, any Smiths in the room? <laughs> all right, so I'm sure you two Smiths aren't related, right? <laughs> that happens. I mean, you just have a common name. You, I go somewhere, a new city, and I open a phone book, and I find a Kittles, if I do, more than likely I'm probably related to it because it's not a common name. Some of these lineages are quite common, so it doesn't mean that, um, uh, that they're all related, it just means that they're very old and very distant uh, and geographically widespread. However, Oprah Winfrey had a very unique lineage. It was, it, was, it was more recent and it was localized to, in particular, the Capelli people in Liberia. And so she was, she was a bit star startled because she thought she was, what, Zulu, right? Interesting story. Maybe if you ask me a question later, I can tell you about that story, but it, she's not Zulu. <laughs> Quincy Jones had interesting matches among the um, uh, Cameroon uh, uh, Bamiliki people, and he got excited. He went online and searched about the Bamiliki. He said, wow, they're musicians. You know, I inherited my a musical. I was like, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> Chris Tucker, high levels of African ancestry. I mean, he... Uh, he he, on both sides, his maternal and his paternal side, we were able to show um, was common in, in uh, Cameroon and also Angola. And then T.D. Jakes, which I don't even have to tell you, he looks like he's some Nigerian, right? <laughs> <laughs> he had a match in Nigeria. Uh, all of his matches were in Nigeria, as a matter of fact, and um, uh, Western Cameroon. So why study these maternal and paternal lineages? because they are very informative. They allow us to say something about um, uh, distant uh, relatives. So when you look at this, uh, if you go back one generation, you have two ancestors, your mother and your father. If you go back two generations, you have four ancestors, your grandparents. If you go back uh, nine generations, there were 912 people that contributed to your DNA. That's a lot of people, all right? And however, we can say something about your um, Y chromosome and your mitochondrial DNA because those came down uh, uh, identically um, through your, uh, your mother or through your father if you're a male. If we go back during the period of slavery 350 years ago, that's 14 generations, there's over 16,000 ancestors. Now we can't say any, anything with good confidence about all of them, but we can, as I said, say something about this lineage, which is good, and this lineage. And if you know other people in this family tree, like you'll hear from uh, Brother Chris Rabb, you'll, you can find other people to test in your family to get multiple lineages. So it is quite useful, and uh, many folks are, are utilizing this, this uh, service. So I'm going to end with this. This is my family tree. This is me, my brother, my sister. We actually were able to look at my mother's mitochondrial DNA lineage. Uh, she gave that to all of us, and that went back to Hausa, as I mentioned. And uh, my mother's father's side, we had to test my Uncle Gerald uh, for his Y chromosome. My mother didn't give me that Y chromosome. Uh, and that was Igbo in Nigeria. And on my father's side, his maternal line, Mandinka. So I was happy because I, you know, I saw a Mandingo when I was young and I was telling folks, you know, <laughs> like, you know, went to school the next day. I mean, we do that. You know, we romanticize, we make up these stories that we don't have any information. 
And so that's why this was so near and dear to me, because I was like, I'm going to set this up so that I can trace with some level of confidence, some level of uh, inference in terms of where in Africa. So I wasn't lying when I said I was Mandinka when I went to school, okay? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> He's not my daddy. <laughs> but I put him up here because, in fact, 30% of black men, we test their Y chromosomes. They don't go back to Africa, but to Europe. And so mine is one of them. I, mine goes back. My great, great, great grandfather was white. He was a planter in, in, in Sylvania, Georgia. OK? And you see, in, in, in the South, you have black cemeteries, white cemeteries. You go to the white cemetery, you see all these kittles, and it's nicely um, <coughs> mowed, the grasses. And his flowers, it's real pretty. You go to Black Cemetery, you got to be careful because you will fall into one of those graves. <laughs> you know, it's overgrown. But I was able to find this, 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 this grave where this planter who was white was buried in the Black Cemetery because he was messing with a black woman. Okay, he wasn't allowed to be buried with the family. So, so that's interesting. So this, this is not uncommon. Thirty percent. In fact, I'm sure Chris can tell you something about that, too. So when we look at these non-African lineages, as I mentioned, for Europeans, 30% paternal, about 5% of maternal lines of African Americans are European, but 30% of paternal lines. Native American, everybody says they have Native American. We can't find it. We can't find it. We can't find it. And so maybe we could talk about that further also. But this is, this is quite interesting, and I, I get really um, excited about it. I think that... Um, but, I think we all don't need to be involved in this discussion because the science is evolving and we really need to ask serious questions in terms of its utility, its usefulness, and its limitations. So thank you. Thank you.